Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Teacher Educator Conference 2015 in Hyderabad. Uh, I'm very pleased to be joined um, this afternoon by Dr. Richard Smith, um, Lena Mukopadhyay, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, and, uh, and Paul Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. Thank you for, um, for joining us. I know you've just come out of your talk, so you're probably looking forward to, um, to having a rest now. But, uh, so I appreciate you taking the time to come and, and, and speak to us. Um, you've just been talking about the, um, the ELT research database in India. Uh, and I'd like to ask you a few questions about that, if, uh, if that's okay. Um, Paul, a question for you, really. Um, when, when, you were, um, when you were creating the database, how, how did you envisage it being used um, what, what in, the, in the process? Uh, perhaps I should begin at the beginning. Um, we realized when we were looking at this whole issue of VLT research in India that there isn't any single database available anywhere. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the idea therefore developed into a project and it's a trilateral project as you must have noticed. Uh, a project in which the University of Warwick represented by Richard, um, the British Council, and the English and Foreign Languages University, to which Lena and I belong. So um, we feel there are several, several uses that uh, this database is going to be put to, but primarily I think serious researchers will get an overview of what has happened in ELT research from 2005 to 2014, a 10-year period, okay. which also means if, if you get an overview, you can establish which areas have been under-researched, which areas have been uh, adequately addressed, uh, and your own choice, therefore, of uh, doing a piece of research, it could be action research, it could be a formal piece of research leading to a degree, will actually be available after your um, acquaintance, as it were, with the database. Okay. So we think there are several tangible uses that this uh, database is going to offer. And um, critically, of course, at the press of a few buttons, we hope researchers uh, or those who intend to become researchers will be able to access information that has been collated and uh, uh, consolidated over a period of time now, and which will turn out to be, I think, extremely useful work. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. It's great. So, so one of the ideas then is, is yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting that. Um, you'll be able to identify the areas of research where, where there still needs to be more kind of research or, or you know exactly. okay that's interesting interesting okay um, Lena the, the um, one of the, the kind of the key attributes of the database um, is that researchers can upload their own research um, is this designed to be an open process or, or is there some kind of quality control um, how, how does that how does that work from well, Paul, right now we are in the phase of documenting research because we feel that we need to get a sense of the kind of ELT research that is happening in India now and uh, what are the subdomains in which people are researching, uh, which kinds of learners uh, are being uh, used as subjects of study or what kind of teachers, levels, etc. So right now it is, uh, I mean, we see this as a process of documentation, uh, which uh, again we think is of primary importance importance and uh, then uh, we will uh, perhaps get a sense of uh, the kind of data that we have and based on that we will do some research to find out uh, what is the quality of the data but uh, using the word quality right now is a little tricky because for this First of all, we need to have a working definition, like we almost had a uh, discussion of one year long, if not longer, uh, to reach to an understanding what comprises ELT research in India. 
you know, so that uh, we get uh, d data sets exactly uh, what we need and what would be useful for the users. So if we have to uh, reach at a working definition of quality which has uh, political academic issues, you know, to define research and who does that. We had a short discussion also in the uh, core team on that. Uh, so right now it is not going to do any quality check. However, we are going to definitely uh, analyze uh, the trends that are emerging in uh, ELT research in India uh, in the last 10 years. Sounds interesting. Thank you. Um, Richard, a question for you. Uh, the database obviously it contains research from um, an e Indian ELT context. Um, could you tell us about some of the challenges that you faced in setting up the database and how you managed to, to gather all of the research? It's st it's still, we're still in the process of gathering research details. And we've, we've had two years on the project. Lena, as Lena has said, the, the, the initial stages of defining definition has been very, very important, those discussions. Now, we, we had some uh, consultation meetings with representatives of, I think, at least 25 Indian universities, institutions, um, and we have to acknowledge their assistance in, in those discussions. But I think the length of time it took to define terms was, was and to discuss those, those issues of what we are trying to gather and what, why we would be doing it and what it could be used for were, was, was not time wasted at all. Um, but it, did, it, it took time because uh, there were different opinions, for example, around the, the quality control issue. Uh, but I, think, I, th I do think the decisions that we've made have, um, have been the right ones. So we're going to gather, try to gather information about as much Indian research, ELT research as we can. Um, we have, to a large extent, you know, we have a lot, quite a lot of data in there already, especially, for example, from EFL University itself, which is a major, the major centre of ELT research in India. Uh, we're conscious, uh, and we're very grateful to um, Amal Padwa, for his help in a survey that he did of, of MPhils and PhDs in other institutions. So uh, he's, we, we've incorporated uh, um, data from there. We are quite conscious of the major challenge of still needing to reach out in this, in this very big country with, with a, um, such a large population and of, of researchers, ELT researchers who are probably quite isolated from one another and haven't, haven't been networking as much as we, we think they, they will in the future. So the reach, reaching out to them, and this is very much what we hope to do today, is to publish, publicize the database. It's now open for, for Indian uh, ELT researchers to input details of their, of their research. Okay. okay. So, Alina, you... Um, so, I mean, I suppose with the, with the process and, 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 just, um, and working with these, these universities, there's been this kind of, I guess, fostering this, this idea of collaboration and cooperation. So, I mean, it's, in theory, the idea then is, is that moving forward, it, that, that, that will kind of happen jointly and, and there'll be a lot more, um, I guess, cooperation and collaboration from, from those universities ongoing. No, I mean, is that... That's, right. that's Okay, okay, great. And also, I mean, the idea, uh, you're saying, I mean, I guess when people, researchers are working in isolation, this, this sort of forms almost like a hub or a, a, a place where they can come and... Okay, interesting. And is it, and is it live now? Can, can we access the database now? It is. Okay, it is. What, what's, what's the URL? Can you tell us the URL? So, uh, the easiest way to get to it at the moment is um, the British Council India's main website has a link to it. And that is British, British Council, one word, dot org, O-R-G, dot I-N. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. That will lead you to the, the survey page. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us, Paulina and Richard, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having okay. me. Bye.